If a couple comes into your clinic and has had a history of chromosomal abnormalities in previous kids, or have had spontaneous abortions, or is advanced maternal age, that is an age greater than 35 years old for mom, they may ask you for help in determining if this current fetus has a genetic abnormality. That is, they may ask you to help them decide whether or not they should keep this fetus, undergo an elective abortion, and try again. Most of these procedures are not done on every fetus. In fact, they are very dangerous with an increased risk of fetal loss. Let's build a table where we're gonna go through each of the five different testing modalities and their different uses. We're gonna start with the one that's done safely in every pregnancy, the ultrasound. And what we're gonna do is talk about the procedure itself, at what week it can be used, the goal of performing the test, the risk of loss, and then any extra content you need to know about it. So the ultrasound is a very safe procedure to do. In fact, you're gonna do it multiple times on every pregnancy. It can be used at any gestational age, all weeks. And the goal is simply to assess intrauterine pregnancy, fetal age, and fetal well-being. It's a screening tool. If baby's kicking and moving around, you know she's doing well. If you can confirm the intrauterine pregnancy to prevent an ectopic pregnancy. The risk of loss is absolutely no risk because it is an ultrasound and carries no radiation burden. And in general, if you use it to diagnose fetal age, the error in weeks is the, the same number as the trimester, such that if you attempt to identify fetal age in the first trimester, you'll have gestational age plus minus one week. If you assess for the first time a fetus in the second trimester, you'll have gestational age with an error of margin of two weeks. And if you wait to the third trimester to assess, you'll have the gestational age with an error of margin of plus minus three weeks. The next one we're gonna cover is another ultrasound modality. It's not used all the time, but I'm gonna talk about it next because it is also safe. It's the transcranial Doppler. Pause. 20 weeks. It's generally used after 20 weeks, and the goal is to assess fetal anemia. This has replaced the pubs, which we're gonna talk about later, in the diagnosis of anemia. And it's replaced the pubs because transcranial Doppler has no risk of fetal loss. It's just an ultrasound with Doppler. The idea being that if the fetus is anemic, you can measure an increased flow through the cranium. The increased flow is a compensatory mechanism for the anemia. However, it does not provide any access or transfusion. So if the baby is anemic, you may still need to do a PUBS. But for diagnosis alone, use the transcranial Doppler. Now, the safest of these invasive procedures, and the next three are gonna be the dangerous ones, is amniocentesis. You put a needle through mom and into the sac and draw out some of the amniotic fluid. It can only be done in the second trimester or later and is screened for alpha fetoprotein because you're getting amniotic fluid. But because some of baby cells are in the amniotic fluid, you can get some genetic material. The risk of loss is approximately one in 200. Pretty significant risk. And when you do the amniocentesis, will determine what you're doing it for. Because if it's in the very beginning of the second trimester, you're probably doing it to get genetic material. If you're doing it later on in the second trimester, you can also do it to assess anemia by plotting on a Lyle graph. This process of diagnosing fetal anemia has essentially been abandoned. The risk is too high and the benefits are very low. With transcranial Doppler and pubs, you might as well just do those. But this is an old school thing you might still hear about. And if it's greater than 36 weeks towards the end of delivery, towards the end of pregnancy before delivery, you can use it to assess the lethicin to sphingomyelin ratio to determine if the baby needs any steroids before delivery. So amniocentesis has a bunch of potential uses, 
Well, really, in this lecture, we're talking about the greater than 16 weeks to get to genetic material. But the problem with amniocentesis is that it's in the second trimester. And to do an elective abortion in the second trimester involves a suction curatage. The fetus has already begun to develop, and it's very difficult to do, and there's high risk to mom. So patients who are very high risk will elect to do a chorionic villus sampling. This can be done at 6 to 12 weeks. Now you can imagine that if you're putting a needle into baby in this early in development, the risk of loss is very high. And it's higher than amniocentesis. It's about 1 in 150. But it gives you direct access to baby's genetic material. So you're able to do genetic screens, karyotypes, and actually look at their genes. And so this provides the best modality for determining if there's any genetic abnormality early on when elective abortion is simply dilation and curatage, which is the safest form of elective abortion. It can be done early before the fetus is developed. And this procedure has mostly been abandoned, but pubs, the percutaneous umbilical blood sampling, is a very dangerous procedure. It's only done later on in pregnancy to determine if there's fetal anemia. And it is the best test because what you do is sample baby's blood. You can actually determine what the hemoglobin and hematocrit is. But the risk of loss, because you're going into the blood vessel and the chance of missing is very high because that blood vessel is very small, the risk of fetal loss is approximately 1 in 30. This may also reflect an indication for the procedure is presumed fetal anemia. But what it provides is access for transfusion. You're going to hear more about this in the isoimmunization lecture. If the baby is too young to be delivered and you've diagnosed fetal anemia by transcranial Doppler, the PUBS allows you intravenous access for transfusion of blood to prevent baby from dying. So PUBS, while it is very dangerous to do, may be the only life-saving procedure you've got for a young gestational aid fetus who has fetal anemia. So I want you to recognize that these procedures are not done on every patient every time. The ultrasound is the only one you can use regularly is included because you're going to see this test in essentially every lecture in OB. I want you to be familiar with these procedures because you're going to see them from time to time throughout these OBGYN lectures. Recognizing that amniocentesis, chorionic villus sampling, and percutaneous umbilical blood sampling are dangerous but have their intended use. That is advanced early testing. We make these videos for free and we need your help. Please donate because without your donations we can't make any more videos. Please donate!